Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. And uh, good morning to all of you. Welcome to the second session of uh, multiculturalism uh, organized by uh, Unit of Leadership and Wellbeing. Um, thank you for joining and participating uh, this session. Uh, today we are very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Awani Ghazali as our speaker and uh, she's going to talk about the art of dialogue in navigating religious and cultural diversity. Dr. Alwani Ghazali is a lecturer in the Department of Aqidah and Islamic Thought, I'm Academy of right. Islamic Studies. Dr. Uh. Alwani Ghazali is a lecturer in the Department of Aqidah and Islamic Thought, Academy of Islamic Studies, University of Malaya. She's also a Deputy Director of UM Center for Civilization Dialogue. Alwani, Dr. Alwani specializes in the area of studies in religion and dialogue during her PhD. Currently, she's undergoing a one-year training organized by King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz International Center for Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue, Kaisip Wina. She has completed eight modules and undergone one training based in Belgrade, Serbia for capacity building. She's also looking forward to launching a dialogue course for youth throughout Malaysia and to publishing a book on models of dialogue in Prophet Muhammad's life. So without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Alwani Ghazali to deliver her speech. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't really see uh, all the participants on my slide right now, but I really appreciate the attendance this morning. Uh, I understand um, clearly that when we mention dialogue, uh, most of the people would think that this is something uh, which we can consider as common sense because it's really about talking. But um, when uh, we are moving towards a more superb form of globalization, so the art of speaking actually is something that matters. Because of that, um, today, uh, recently, the discussion on, on this art of dialogue is taking place quite significantly in many places throughout the world. One of the centers in the world which organizes the training for dialogue as an art or skill is uh, the one which I'm, um, which I'm under training right now, the King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz International Center of Interreligious and Intercultural Dialogue. All right, um, so what is dialogue actually? And we are going to have a look as well at dialogue and religion plus culture, three big juicy words that we're going to see today. I'm sure that the ladies and gentlemen, the, all the participants have known um, dialogue, have some ideas on dialogue, religion, and also culture. But do we realize that the three of these are really complicated? So let's go uh, gradually um, to see what dialogue really is. So dialogue, in other words, to put it simply, is actually conversation. Okay, it is not a debate. It is not a campaign. It's not an advocacy, it's not a discussion only, it's not only a presentation, uh, but it's more than that. So it is conversation between whom? It is actually, according to one of the scholars, Leonard Swidler, it's actually um, a two-way communication between persons. What types of persons are, there? are they? So these persons are persons who have different views on a subject with the purpose of learning more truth about the subject from the other, which means that we have a subject, we have something, a topic to discuss, and between the two people or more, 
um, there must be a different perspective. If there's no different perspective, that's not a dialogue. It's merely a chit chatting, um, a hangout between friends similar ideas, similar tastes, and similar in many things. That's not a dialogue. So it must be having different views. The next thing is that when we talk about dialogue, it requires a safe space. Okay, so Muhammad Abu Nimr talks about dialogue in the form of its uh, its environment, okay, the environment where dialogue should flourish is actually a safe space. It's a container for people to surface their assumptions, okay, in other words, to let the other know what they previously thought about the other the, or the interlocutor of dialogue, okay, and then question the previous perceptions and also judgments. Okay, so this is a process between two or more party. Each party would uh, be frank to us and to be ready to listen to the answer and test their presumptions or perceptions, prejudice before that. Okay, so Kaisit, the center that I mentioned just now, according to Kaisit, uh, it's actually, um, dialogue is actually an emphasis on questions. So questions are involved. Inquiry. Co-creation. Co-creation means dialogue actually is a way or a gateway for knowledge creation. Okay, co-creation and listening. The uncovering of one's own assumptions and those of others a suspension of judgment and a collective search for truth. So actually two people meet, they do not know each other, but they have this kind of ideas in the mind because human minds work best by recognizing patterns. When they recognize patterns, the patterns are organized in a way uh, that make it easy for them to interpret the data from the surroundings. Okay, because of that, stereotypes happen. When the stereotypes happen, uh, uh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it, it make it easy for the human being to navigate in the environment, to know the others in the surrounding, and sometimes that can bring to prejudice and discrimination to a certain extent. So dialogue is something which comes in the middle to test the stereotypes, the prejudgment and the prejudice, and to mold a new idea in the human mind, in the minds of the participants in dialogue, so that a new concept of the other and of oneself is uh, shaped. According to William, Isaacs, he said that uh, a dialogue is a conversation. It's not conversation on the side, on the marginalized um, position, but it should take place in the middle. Okay, it's not side talks, it's not uh, backbiting, no, but it should be focused in front of the participants of dialogue. Okay, now we go to a more complicated form of uh, dialogue conception where we look uh, at the theory of, of dialogue uh, brought by one of the philosophers whose ideas are always referred to when we discuss about dialogue. There are many actually philosophers whose ideas are discussed um, when we talk about dialogue, but this is one of them. Uh, we also have Martin Buber, for example. Uh, Martin Buber, uh, a Jewish uh, philosopher who discussed about the relationship between a person and the other. And he said that a dialogue happens like the meeting of souls. It's not 
uh, only the physical meeting, but it also involves the meeting of souls. That's according to Martin Buber. And he said that in the relationship between I and thou, T-H-O-U, the I and thou, um, uh, the I, I, which means me, I, the first person, I perceives thou as equal to the first person. So uh, thou is not the object to be manipulated in, in any way uh, by I. So with that equality comes respect, comes cooperation, and comes other positive values. And according to Martin Buber as well, the I and thou relationship brings to the upper supernatural being, which is uh, the creator. Okay, the bind, the bond between humankind brings the bond to an upper level to an upper level to the uh, bond with the creator. However, in the I and it relationship, the you, the it in the you is actually manipulated as an instrument to serve one's own purpose and that relationship the bond between i and it there's no dialogue happens okay that's martin buber i do not talk a lot here about martin buber on the slide i just jump to hans jock dama he's quite uh, recent in this sense he sees that dialogue is a being in the world okay he is also famous with the idea of hermeneutics hermeneutics simply um, defined is actually an art of interpretation so according to him dialogue is uh it related to philosophical hermeneutics and he said that Philosophical hermeneutic understands itself not in as absolute position, but as, as a way of experience. So in other words, nothing is absolute. Okay, A person knows something only by his experience. Okay, Because of that, it insists that there is no higher principle than holding oneself open in a conversation. Because of that, okay, one should challenge the knowledge that he has about anything. Okay, through uh, the challenge happens through dialogue. And this person has proposed few dimensions of dialogue. Number one, he said, a person must open himself to the others in dialogue. Then a person must engage in the prejudice that he or she has in the process of dialogue. So she or he must mention what she or he has about the other. For example, uh, I may think that all Christians are the same that all uh, the leaders in Christianity, like father or pastors, all of them cannot marry. Okay, so I face, I mention that prejudice to my Christian friend uh, so that uh, an idea can be spoken out from her or him. Okay, before I know that actually, uh, uh, before I know whether the idea is wrong or right, I have, I'm, I'm clueless. But when I, when I mention that, oh, I see this as such and such, so my friend in the dialogue will correct me. No, for example, he will say, no, a father is a figure in, uh, is a leader in um, Catholic Christian, and uh, yes, father is not married, but when it is a pastor, it is in um, uh, Protestant Christianity, uh, so this person is allowed to get married. Uh, so this is a new knowledge to me. I may, had, uh, I may have had 
prejudice before. Okay, so that's one of the examples. Another example. Before an, an Indian, a Hindu uh, knows about what is actually a Kaaba for Muslims, they may have thought that a Kaaba uh, is, is like an idol to be worshipped. So maybe they have the idea that all the Muslims, um, uh, all the Muslims uh, uh, prohibit the worship of idol. Actually, they also worship an idol that is the Kaaba. Uh, that's a wrong idea, actually. So as a Muslim conversing to the Hindu, I can explain that that is not an idol. That's just a matter of, uh, of a direction for the whole Muslim in the world to pray. And that there's nothing inside the Kaaba, uh, such as idols, which they have imagined. So this kind of prejudice. Okay, so fusion, number three is fusion of horizons. What does it mean? Fusion of horizons means that each party, each participant has a different view about things. Maybe about the other or maybe about uh, oneself. Okay, so during, during the dialogue, um, each party would, uh, would speak out his or her mind and then the exchange, the, the area in which merging happens, that is the fusion of horizons, uh, just like the picture that you can see here on my slide here. You can see here there's a fusion of horizons happening in the middle here where the information merge. When the information merge, Fusion of horizons happen and a transformation of thought happens as well. Okay. Number four, according to Gadama, there must be questioning involved in the process of dialogue. So each person must question the other to make sure whether he or she has understood the information well or or that uh, the interpretation in one's mind is different from that of the other. Maybe the other person means something else, but uh, A means something, B understood as something else. So questioning must be there. And also, number five, uh, the fifth dimension, according to um, Gadama, uh, the engagement between the two parties or more must be mutual, they must take part. There must be a disclosure between two, all the parties involved. If just if there's just someone, the same person talking, it's not fair. Although listening is much, very, very much emphasized in the process of dialogue. Listening with care, listening with attention. That is the most emphasized uh, most emphasis is put on listening, although that's the case. Uh, mutual engagement is very important, which means we have to take them to speak. We have to be ready to disclose, but it's not easy. Yes. OK, now, um, so as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, when we talk about the art of dialogue. Dialogue itself is complicated. And now we would like to see the role of dialogue in many religions, relationship, and in many cultural backgrounds, they are indeed complicated. Religion could be I could say that religion is not that complicated as compared to culture because at least in religion, we can see the, uh, the, the structure, the system. There's uh, mm, the creed in a particular religion. For example, in Islam, we have, we have Tawheed as a system, the oneness of Allah. Okay, And in Hinduism, they have this uh, Trimurti and Trisakti, the, uh, the creed, as you can see, the moksha 
or the idea of 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 um, achieving the status of of God according to Hinduism. Uh, so there's a structure somewhere when we discuss about religion. But when we discuss culture, it is even more complex because uh, culture is actually not homogeneous. There's no one type of culture that fits all. For example, when I say that I'm a Malay, my type of Malayness is not similar with um, Umu's type of Malayness. Maybe Umu is, uh, Umu is not here today, Sharifah. Sharifah is a Malay as well, but maybe she's a Malay from Penang, uh, who has a descendant from Mama, for example, and has this typical type of food, uh, spicy a little bit. But I'm a Malay from a Turkish family, let, let's say. So I like more of a meat which has uh, tomato tomato sauce for example so culture has its own form but it's not the same we cannot generalize culture it is built through many layers so because of the complexity of culture um, it might cause clash in the society if it's not controlled religion on the other hand yes throughout history we have seen that religion okay, uh, has been misused to satisfy one's own political agenda. For example, in the picture here that you can see, during the Crusades, Christianity has been used, misused by the people to kill a group of, uh, um, for mass destruction. Muslims in the past have been killed throughout crusades. Uh, similarly, now we have a group which is known as ISIS, which uses a religion for their agenda. And it's not actually in line with Islamic teaching, the true Islamic teaching, but they are misusing Islam for that sake. See, um, there's the word La ilaha illallah on the head of this person. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and they use the term Allahu Akbar and then that is being mis uh, the, the slogan is being misunderstood throughout the world where people blame Islam because of ISIS so religion has been misused to create disaster and war throughout human history uh, on the other hand we have to also uh, that is also a fact, a truth in the idea that actually religion is also the basis of peace and unity for human being because all religions teach their disciples for peace and harmony, sustainability as well. If you look into Buddhism, for example, they have uh, the notion of of, of uh, uh, maga, okay, the eight principles of human life. They want to achieve that kind of peace and uh, uh, serenity in one's life, e even in their own soul. And they have to achieve uh, the serenity with also their surroundings, with their society. In Islam, uh, the word Islam itself is from the word salam, which means peace. So actually religion is the basis and it provides values for humankind to be united, to respect one another, to be at peace. Okay, But uh, at times, because of the religious difference, because of cultural difference, um, human being, the other is interpreted differently. Because of that, we need the art of dialogue to um, understand each other better. Because obviously, in this globalized world, diversity is actually unavoidable or inevitable. Uh, having said that, uh, the question is, when is dialogue useful? People would argue that there's no use of talking anymore 
because we are being attacked. For example, in the case of Palestine, they are being attacked by the brutal Israeli armies, for example, who had done lots of, of, of uh, casualties, lots of harms, lots of, of, of uh, destruction there. Okay, and they did not respect, they do not until now, they do not respect human rights and justice. So is dialogue useful in that case? Let's have a look at this. Okay, let's have a look at the peace building map provided by Muhammad Abu Nimr, the man that I showed uh, at the early of the presentation, and Diamond. They are actually uh, scholars in peace building. So this is the map that they introduced. This is the map of peace building, mm, diversity of human being, which can escalate. Okay, we, uh, we can read uh, this map from the left side. Human being is different and differences can escalate to disagreement. Disagreement can cause problem. Problem, if not uh, being managed, can uh, escalate to conflict, then to violence, which can produce the unwanted result of implication of war. So war is happening. In this case, in this stage, dialogue is no more useful because it, um, destruction has been done. Okay, where is dialogue useful here? Manage differences, manage disagreement before it turns into problem here in prevention. Violence, if there is violence, in most cases, dialogue is no more useful because it can quickly escalate to war. But when war happens, both parties are getting tired. Sometimes, most times, they need to rest a bit to build up, rebuild the power. Okay, their arms, uh, uh, they have to retreat. So there's a ceasefire. After ceasefire, there's, there's no dialogue here, no dialogue, but there's some sort of negotiation to reach an agreement. And after that, a reconstruction is made in the places involved in war. Transformation is, is made here as well between trans, uh, reconstruction and rehabilitation. Dialogue is needed. Why dialogue is needed? To cure the mental health of the people involved in war. Rehabilitation, reconciliation, yes, dialogue is involved here. So dialogue is useful here in the transformation process and also in the prevention process, not in all situations. Now let us see the principles of dialogue. There are 10 principles of dialogue. To make sure that a dialogue is effective, first of all, the environment of the dialogue must be a safe environment. What does it mean by safe? Um, there is no risk of um, disclosure of what is discussed in the dialogue group. Disclosure, uh, disclosure to the authority, for example, which can bring harm to the person involved in the dialogue. Okay, the policing, uh, if there's a policing purpose in that, uh, in that uh, among the participants of dialogue, uh, the environment is not that safe because disclosure uh, or sharing of information is not smooth. So the environment must be safe. 
how um, by uh, having trust between each other among the participants of dialogue. Next one, if we involved in dialogue, we have to be there with a learning attitude, not to provoke other people. So we approach dialogue with a learning attitude. We want to understand the other. We want to listen respectfully to the other. Just like we want others to listen to us respectfully. Right? Next point, the third principle is we have to agree on the purpose. So what is the purpose of that dialogue? Do we want to understand each other, the identity? Do we, is that just uh, an introductory dialogue where we don't exchange uh, very deep controversial um, ideas? that we hold in our hand, uh, in our mind? Is that an introductory dialogue or is the dialogue designed for um, an action? Action in the community for advocacy, for example. Advocacy, for example, to uplift poverty among the community members, to help single mothers for example what is the purpose of that dialogue we have to agree on the purpose of the dialogue number four there must be some ground rules throughout the process of dialogue what are the examples of ground rules number one each member cannot leak the information discussed in the dialogue. Number two, there must be trust among the dialogue participants. Number, four, uh, number three, there must be mutual respect. The use of words must be respectful. No, provoca no provocation. Yes, one can surface their prejudices, one can surface the ideas towards the others, but that is done in a respectful way. Okay, so those are some ground rules of dialogue. Okay, and number five, the principle number five, each member has to take risks. Sometimes when we say uh, something unpleasant towards the others, like when I gave an example just now about a Hindu, okay, that, that Hindu is actually a student who, uh, whom I have interviewed in one of my research. And uh, I'm glad that they spoke up their mind. Um, one of them asked about the Kaaba. Is there any, any idol in the Kaaba? I heard that there's... Uh, there's this um, one of the, he, he mentioned, one of the Trimurti, one of the gods of the Hindus in the Kaaba. Oh, that's a surprise to me. So that person was taking some risk. Maybe I dislike it, but it's good that he had surfaced his, his feelings, his thought, so that I know. All right. And be ready to confront the perceptions to be confronted as well. Maybe my idea about the other group is wrong, for example. I thought, another thought that I had before, before the dialogue between me and uh, a Christian uh, priest, uh, a Catholic priest, I thought a Christianity is a religion which is um, exclusive, that they believe that they, only them have a, a validity so because of that, they have this kind of missionary work, okay. But according to the priest that I dialogue with, he said that, no, uh, Christianity does not believe that only them, be to them, only to them belong the validity of religion. So from that point on, I know how 
uh, a Catholic Christian thinks. This is different from what I read in the book. Okay, so I confronted my perception. Next one. Uh, the sixth principle, relationship comes first. So we have to know where are we? Is this an introductory dialogue? Is this um, a deep dialogue? Am I going to see this person again in the future? Would I like to keep the relationship in the long run? Okay, in dialogue, that is emphasized. The long-term relationship that comes first. So there are things, although um, it is encouraged that you take risk in dialogue, that you grow in dialogue, although that's encouraged, despite the encouragement, we have to really be wise to filter what should be asked, what shouldn't be asked at that point of time, at that seat, I would say. So maybe some questions, some questions could be postponed for the sake of harmony. Maybe the other, the person that we meet in that seat is actually uh, having a, a different kind of personality. So uh, maybe a little bit sensitive, maybe not open to um, discussion. Maybe on that particular day, the mood is not that okay. So we postpone the question to another time. The relationship comes first. Next one. We have to address hard questions, taking risks for that question. But that must be done gradually, just as this ball goes up on the staircase, gradually. Okay, so we gradually ask hard questions, gradually depart from them. Okay, not to give a shock to the emotional aspect of the other. We cannot deny the emotional aspect of the other person. Uh, we have emotions too, right? So uh, be in their shoes, treat the other people as we want to be treated respectfully. Okay, having said that again, on our part, we do not quit or avoid difficult issues. Maybe we can tell, we can express ourselves to the other. Okay, I can answer that question, but maybe not today. Uh, I don't have enough uh, information to answer that question, for example. Or maybe you can, uh, maybe you can say, um, I think I better check with blah, blah, blah. But, but that's just postponing. That's not uh, uh, um, avoiding as such. Uh, the best is to attend the question and remember to use when answering difficult questions posed to us, remember to use the word I, instead of using the word, all Muslims believe that blah, 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 because in Islam, we have many mazhab. You cannot represent everything. We have Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali, right? If you're a Muslim, if you're a Christian, there are also many, many denominations, so on, so forth. So always use the word I to avoid being, uh, to avoid generalization. You are not representing the whole population. Don't put the burden on your shoulder because nobody asked that from you. Next one, we must expect to be changed. Remember about the perspectives that I mentioned just now? This perspective that I have towards Christianity, this perspective that I had maybe towards a Buddhism. Once I had a lunch, I had lunch with a Buddhist speaker. I thought all Buddhists do not eat meat, do not eat um yeah, they are only vegetarians. I thought that all Buddhists are vegetarians, but there are exceptions. This particular speaker said they only do not eat meat in certain circumstances which involved um, shedding of blood, shedding of the animal's blood by themselves, by themselves directly. But when 
So it's complicated to explain. But there's an exception in the case of Buddhists. Not all of them um, are vegetarian in all occasions. So in my mind, there's a change in perspective. Expect that to happen. Finally, okay, when we uh, experience change in our mind, of course, when we talk, we are changing the other's perception towards us as well. Most generalization would say that people with, uh, when this happens always when I'm outside the university, when, when I'm, I'm with this hijab, quite a long hijab, if you can see my hijab, walking on the street, people see me as machi machi from somewhere. Suddenly I speak English. Oh, tak sangka ya, orang pakai turung labuh boleh cakap English. This is some of the things that happened. So, with dialogue and interaction, some kind of a change is happening to its, uh, in the minds of the others as well. Those are the 10 principles of dialogue. Question is, when do we start a dialogue? This is another difficult question. Why do I say difficult? I am different. I have my set of personalities. Remember, I talked about um, Malay being mixed with Turkish blood, with etc, etc. Culture is complicated. Personality is complicated because it is built layer by layer through many, many factors. Family values upbringing, education, knowledge, um, etc, etc, maybe encounter, etc. So the personality of the person is something which we must assess. Start by the positive mindset, but always be careful. Okay, so we have this diagram. In the middle is the comfort zone where we all love to be in. In comfort zone, there's no challenge. Everything is good. There's no change needed. Everything is, is, is conducive, relax, no challenge in other words. However, if we want to grow, there must be sort of a challenge to ourselves. Similarly, uh, the audience here, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that you're a successful person. How did you achieve your success? Of course, by stretching from the comfort, comfort zone to another layer by lack of sleep, by lack of entertainment, by lack of leisure, you achieve success because of that in your life. Similarly, in dialogue, if we want to grow, there's no other way than stretching to another zone, which is called a stretch zone, where learning takes place. It's sometimes discomfort, Yes, but always try to learn. Give it a try. Oh, for example, this, this personality, this Miss A looks like uh, not so friendly. She doesn't smile. She seems quite cold. Uh, all right, this time, just give it a try by saying hello. How are you? Okay, if she looks so cold, um, she's not ready to disclose herself at all, give her time, give her privacy, respect that, um, respect that zone, respect that, that um, space, respect the privacy that she has. Maybe next time, uh, start with a new conversation, 
dig slowly, exchange thought bit by bit. Okay. Maybe another encounter would be a better encounter. Stretch a little bit. Yes, you don't have time to, as she does, but once in a while, why not know each other? I do not step into each other's, um, what do we say, this territory. Don't step too much into each other's territory. Uh, have some, some kind of try and error in that sense. Okay, if you're in the panic or danger zone, no way, not this zone. If she or he has declared war or fight against you, no way. Uh, not a good place to have a dialogue because there's no trust. Maybe you have done something wrong. You stepped. Uh, you are, you have gone. You have gone overboard. Maybe you have been perceived by another person as a as an intruder. Are uh, no way that you can have a dialogue with her or him. So the stretch zone is the best place for you to start. Next one. Now we see this diagram. This is uh, introduced by Anas Alabadi, one of the trainers uh, in the international fellows training that I underwent in August. Uh, so uh, the diagram is about the dialogue zone. We have the comfort zone or the neutral zone. Here, no real dialogue happened because there's nothing to, nothing much to us. Only superficial question. Just hi hi and bye bye is not sufficient for dialogue to happen. Dialogue means something which is deep, intense, which you feel comfortable to express your differences. For example, before I met a Jew, I was afraid to talk to a Jew. I thought that no Jews, it's not J-U-I-C-E, it's J-E-W. I thought all Jews cannot be trusted. They are all the same. They are snobbish. So the first time I was involved in a small group with a Jew, I had some discomfort. I just let her speak and I, I just observe. Is she similar with the ideas that I had in mind? That all Jews are snobbish, all Jews are arrogant, all Jews are this and that. But it seems that individuals are different. We cannot judge by a set that they have. I mean, the, the religion that they have, the culture that they have, because it's really complicated. See them as individuals. So in the comfort zone, neutral zone, I did not ask anything. I just want to observe. No real dialogue happened. Then bit by bit, we had like after eight sessions, I observe her even more. And I know that she also has the difficulty in her community uh, uh, because she has been um, she has been attacked by the anti-Semitic groups in America. She's from America. So she has this kind of, of experience, bitter experience. In my case as well, I have bitter experience because um, my primary school, for example, was a convent school. I was the first Malay prefect to wear hijab. I remember my principal, who was also a Christian, called me to ask me remove hijab. Why? As a kid, I wondered, and that was an unpleasant experience. So I understand then, after eight sessions, that each and every member in the session has this kind of uh, unpleasant feelings about their own religious identity. Due to that, okay, 
after eight sessions, I start to be in the dialogue zone. We start to feel comfortable with each other. And the facilitator was great. He could create the trust and safe environment, which made us, uh, which made it possible for us to share our experiences. Okay. So when it goes down here, it's good. But when there's war, there's fights, and there's panic zone between us, there's no dialogue. There's, there will be no dialogue happening because it's not appropriate for dialogue to happen. Just like the case of um, Bosnia-Herzegovina and also uh, Ser the Serbian people. They had a very good uh, relationship, but out of a sudden there was war between them. They, until now, they did not want to talk about that. For example, when uh, the, the participants in that international fellow training, they went to visit a mosque in Serbia, in Belgrade, Belgrade is in Serbia, um, the Imam did not want to talk about anything related to the war. Destruction happened in the mosque. Uh, bad memories were there, but nothing to be shared. It, it was very bitter. So, so this is uh, the this is the uh, uh, this is the experience of the dialogue experts, and they have provided us with this uh, curve, the bell curve um, of this dialogue zone. So, generally speaking, this is about dialogue, and this the sharing is just an introduction of what dialogue really is for your information okay thank you for listening for your information next year inshallah in june or our mm, summer semester or third semester the pusat dialogue beradaban or um center for civilizational dialogue is going to offer um, a training online training for the youth in malaysia to get uh, uh to get this dialogue skills. I hope that you can advertise this uh, to uh, youth that you know out there because this particular skill is very important, especially in Malaysian context because we have um, multiracial society and uh, um, every now and then we have conflicts between different races in Malaysia. Uh, with that, thank you very much and I, I really appreciate your attendance and your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you Dr. Alwani okay, for such an uh, insightful uh, explanation on uh, uh, dialogue. Eh? Um, okay, I think okay, we can uh, start the ball rolling okay, for Q&A session. Okay, I have a qu one question for you Dr. Alwani. Uh, actually, okay, we are quite opposite, uh, Dr. Alwani, since uh, you are much on uh, expert, expert okay, in dialogue, but whereas okay, I'm a much expert okay, in uh, uh, behaviour, okay, because I'm from the management field. So we actually study on uh, people's uh, behaviour, okay, not on, uh, not much on dialogue. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to ask you, okay, how to uh, cultivate, okay, this uh, habit of. Uh, dialogue okay making dialogues okay, with people okay thank you mm, how to cultivate um i think it starts with um sharing the information about the importance of dialogue people take for granted when it comes to um common sense skill uh, when it comes to especially to human sciences feels, I would say, because they think that is simple. But if they have time to reflect and see uh, their own skills, most of the times it's like uh, there's some sort of immaturity, immaturity. So because of that, the leadership is not strong enough becomes a challenge for them when, when they are being appointed as a leader, for example, when they, uh, when they are challenged uh, to become uh, somebody else in, in a set of, of setting. Um, so I think it starts with awareness. 
what dialogue is, what is the importance of dialogue. I would say that it's, it's for those who have understood what dialogue really is, so it becomes part of the possibility, uh, responsibility to spread the knowledge first. Um, even uh, although in uh, all the dialogue has become a, a field of study in the world, it is relatively new, especially in Malaysia. Um, people thought that they, they know forum is the dialogue. Uh, they thought uh, just talking on the, on the television, like um, a, a narrative, uh, any kind of narrative, they say that that's a dialogue, which is actually not really a dialogue. So yeah, starts with a spreading of the information and advocacy, I would say. All the dialogue is not an advocacy, some, somehow uh, some extent of advocacy about dialogue is needed in the society to start with. Thanks for the question. Any further questions? Thank you, Kium, uh, Dr. Kium. I can't read your message. Can Sharifa help me read the message? Um, Dr. Kim said that they're going for another meeting. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Here. Sure. Thank you very much for attending. Um, Dr. Sawani, uh, sorry, Dr. Awani, this is Sainu Rosana. Um, my question is um, for those people who may uh, not really understand what dialogue is all about yeah how do i mean how do because there is a fine line between debate all right and dialogue right mm -hmm. so how do we um ascertain that you know um a dialogue is a debate you know or vice versa i mean to avoid yeah, you yeah. know as you say problems you know um yeah. towards the end as you yeah, yeah, you have yeah, actually yeah. highlighted the fact that okay for a dialogue to happen yeah it needs to have you know certain um how to say requirements yeah certain understanding on both parties yeah, yeah? yeah. but um, i think many times in reality uh both parties may not you know have that kind of understanding yeah, of course. And you're, you're though very, they use the term, yeah. okay, let's have a dialogue. You know, at the end, you know, it, it wasn't a dialogue that ended or, or that was being produced, but more of a conflict, you know, created yeah. from, you know, the initial attempt. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Your observation is very sharp. Very good, uh, Dr. I don't, Professor I don't, I'm not sure. Sorry if I address wrongly. Um, so, fine line, yes. But the result is something that matters. A debate may uh, may grow the gap even bigger, but a dialogue brings two parties closer. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we think about all the personality types, the differences, the the mi different minds, the different experiences. It will be difficult, but when we we focus on difference between debate and dialogue, that's the outcome is is something that we can evaluate whether this is really a dialogue or, on the other hand, a, a debate. A debate mm. builds wall even more, but a dialogue built bridges to people. Mm. But so I, I, you know, presume that yeah, um, conflict arises or arose, yeah, due to presumptions, um, you know, ignorance, okay, lack of, um, you know, understanding and, and, and knowledge, you know, and whatnot, yeah. So um, even uh, people with high education, you know, uh, with intellectuals and whatnot, you know, we we always see. Yeah, a dialogue ends up, yeah, you know, in in uh, in a debate, yeah, more so often where one is trying to win over the other. Yep. Okay, yep. yeah, when in actual fact, you know, it's supposed to be like you said, you know, uh, an exchange of ideas. Um, you know, at the end, you know, there there would be some changes. 
okay, in terms of, you know, oh, I see your point. Now I understand, you know, instead, um, it's like, oh, okay, that's it. That's going to be our last dialogue or, you know, conversation that, you know, I'm going to have with you. And how do we avoid this? Yeah, because we see this constantly happening, even at the faculty meetings. Okay, I'm I'm not the, I'm not touching the parliaments, you know, and whatnot. But you know, even at our level, all right, our departmental meetings, you know, things like that, you know, and we are supposedly to be uh, highly educated. Yeah, with um, supposed to be with good communication skills and whatnot, and yet those things are not observed. So how do we? remind or how do we keep you know keep telling them that hello you know this is for the good of you know the faculty the good of the department you know we do want to achieve something that's more positive rather than creating conflicts you know for the uh, in in the discussion it's always start with the discussion isn't it yep. yeah so i mean i'm i'm, I'm just like sharing you know uh, my observations okay uh, based on experience, like you said, you have to have some experience, okay? So only then you would understand, yeah, whether... Uh, but but I thank you because, you know, um, the difference between dialogue and debate, yeah, I think has uh, many times been mis misconstrued, yeah, and mis misinterpreted by many people, even yep. people like, you know, us who... who uh, presume who are presumed to be, you know, um, in in the field of knowledge, you know, and whatnot. Thank you. Yeah, we always see that um, time is our asset, right? Um, because of the lack of time that we have, there's a lack of communication, lack of listening going on. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is the dynamic of the uh, the, the power dynamic, who is more in the power position, who is less in the power position. And uh, sometimes the power position is also defined as who has less experience in something, who has more experience in something else, uh, in, in something. So uh, these are the things which actually, um, I would say, hinder the progress um, further because in our world today a progress can happen even more speedily if we were able to dialogue instead of debate about whose idea is the best whose idea is better in that sense uh, as long as if we have the self-interest as long as we have the um I don't know what to say about this but personal agenda, I would say. Mm, the idea of dialogue is something impossible to happen. Uh, people maybe would just shut their mind off uh, instead of speaking out the idea, contributing to a new way of solving a problem, new way of looking at things. Um, actually, I believe that in all levels of the community, for example, the simplest as our small department, academic department in the university, we have lots of experiences from the places that we are brought up, uh, from the university that we went, for example. So if this uh, rich, if this, if this, um, if this richness is shared, it's actually a wealth for us to have uh, a spectrum of ideas, but time maybe is a challenge that only some people are speaking and the rest feels like oh, okay mm. let them speak <laughs> you know yeah, yeah I, I believe that mm. that uh, that's what's happening around us but uh, that's a kerugian yang nyata <laughs> yeah, betul right. so, betul i don't know yeah. uh, that's such a waste uh, oh, sorry if i i i would like to give a credit to adek but mm -hmm. I, I can see that ADEC is progressing very well with this kind of communication that they have among their staff. Um, they, they, they evolve very quickly. They tackle um, problems very quickly. Of the way that they they respect each other in the commun in their, 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 their the units that they have, 
I respect that. Um, I think this is one of the one of the centers in UM which you deserve the credit and respect. I think you just mentioned the word respect. I think that's important, you know, in any dialogue, right? Yeah, first to actually show respect, you know, for the different views, yeah, that the uh, the um, the interlocutors, okay, um, you know, have. I think with with respect and of course good listening skill and understanding, yeah, I think that will bring to something, you know, uh, that started with uh, different uh, people having different views coming to uh, an agreement that yeah i share your idea yeah I, I i can see yeah coming from you know uh, where you stand you know and things like that so yeah. um you know for me an interpretation of a dialogue is something that you start with two different ideas but you know at the end yeah uh, the conclusion is that i see your point i understand that and and i can accept that right but i can still keep yeah to what i believe in yeah because like you said there are yeah. certain matters as as you were talking about religious issues and things like that. Yeah, um, you know, those certain things are already, um, you know, um, set, yeah, in our ways of, of believing or, or being taught, right? So that may not change, okay? However, yes, um, yes. the way we understand it, the way we see how others, like you said, you know, you, you gave some examples, you know, on the different religious, um, how to say, uh, beliefs, yeah? Um, yeah, I, I do see their point, okay, reasons, you know, why they think that we are praying to an idol too, you know, when, you know, like you said, the Kaaba, there's nothing in the Kaaba, you know, um, so there are differences, but it's making others understand, yeah, yeah in, in, in a way, a dialogue, yeah, yeah. can be the uh, way to do it, right, rather than a, a debate. Yeah, so, so dialogue actually nurtures uh, the difference that we have. Dialogue yeah. actually encourages us to be different, but mm -hmm. not to be scared of the difference yes. that we have. Yeah. It, it empowers us to be who we are, to preserve our identity, at the same time respect the other who is not yeah. similar with us. So this is the, the power of dialogue. I'm sorry if it seems as if we are just having this dialogue between us. Yeah, yeah but how please, how please, early uh, do you think? You know how uh, I mean. I think this has to start very early. Yeah, in in our lives actually, um, and I I would say that you know instilling or culti um, cultivating yeah this kind of um, how to say skill. Yeah, I would I would say that this is a skill actually too. Um, you know, very young, yeah, um, in our children's life, you know, even at, at the um, primary school level, yeah, where they learn to negotiate, you know, in their communication, you know, using the right communication strategies and whatnot to avoid conflicts and respecting, yeah, the differences, you know, of, of their friends, yeah, um, their background, you know, and things like that. So, uh, because by the time they reach our level, I think it's a bit susah dah, you know, nak, 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 nak apa orang kata, nak me, me, melentur, yeah? Mm. yeah? Yeah, it starts from, from young, it starts yeah. from young, conversation mm. that the parents have to their kids, how they instill, how they empower, how they provide a safe space to be different mm. at the same time to respect the other people it's actually complicated challenging yeah, it's not it a, is. it's not an easy thing to do mm. uh, uh theory is easier <laughs> mm. it's easier said than done true thank you dr awani that was very insightful very insightful uh, dr. Yeah? I know from, okay. I know, where are you from which faculty um languages and linguistics um dialogue belongs to your to your uh, no no just just I, i'm just interested because i think this is relevant to all of us yeah so it may not just be related to religion per se but you know it it helps i think also in our interactions our you know how we actually um communicate yeah with with people around us i mean there are so many issues nowadays and and i believe that 
by understanding you know um, how to communicate well i think yeah i think we would benefit all of us especially you know as academicians you know who whom people assume that you know um, should know how to actually communicate well how to address certain things how to express themselves you know in the way that's more respectable i mean that's just my opinion okay i'm not representing the languages faculty or what okay <laughs> yeah. yeah expectations are there i mean for for all of us academicians yeah. and we are human as well mm. <laughs> there are there are ups and downs in our lives just learn to forgive and uh, learn to forget learn to say sorry learn to apologize after all human is <laughs> um mm. yeah so dialogue comes in so there's more space for us to uh to state our condition at the time maybe not the best of our days for example we make mistakes yeah self accept self acceptance yeah thank you again you're most welcome I can see the names here Leela, Zuraiza, Khairul Fazli, Mazlan, Muhammad Azi, uh, Muhammad Azi Zain, is it? I can't read the whole name and I can see Shahizam, I can see Shariza, Sharila. Welcome, your ideas are uh, uh, appreciated. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Aino and Rosanna, okay, for the questions. Huh? So, uh, are there any more questions, okay, that you can uh, highlight to Dr. Alwani? Yeah, most welcome, okay, we still have time. Uh, may I ask something? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, uh, so, uh, I know that this um, webinar is more on religious and culture. But in my experience, I think people tend not to dialogue much on these two total subjects because it is kind of like we were taught that these subjects are sensitive yep. and that we should not touch on them. Mm -hmm. So we tend to... Uh, what can Sweet I say? Everything that? under the carpet. <laughs> yeah. Or pretend then, that there's nothing to ask. Uh -huh. And we, we kind of like... I can say we kind of like um, live together well without um, mengambil tahu tentang these differences. But I think what put more differences between us, especially in the Malaysian setting, is actually politics. Hmm. Betul tak? Yeah. And, and no, our no. philosophical views. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, it's polit when when politics is uh, intervenes in in our discussion in anything in interracial issue, interfaith issue, uh, everything becomes messed up <laughs> because a political agenda can intervene in the build uh, the peace building in unity process. But at the same time, we need the political will to build that kind of unity. So uh, that's uh, the idea, generally speaking. Um, uh, at the same time, uh, yes, you're very true about this um, religious and cultural identity being swept under the carpet. We do not like to discuss that. Maybe because it's difficult to discuss. Maybe because it's um, it's not our custom to discuss about that. But uh, it's it's quite a waste if our um, the asset of the Malaysian community of this rich diversity that we have in Malaysia is not used as a tool of learning from each other. Because if uh, if if there's if not us, who is willing to preserve the identity, who else? If, for example, in my case, my multiracial school in the past, before I went to Sekolah Agama during my secondary school, I have Chinese friends, I have um, Indian friends, and I'm, I, and I, I'm not, we're not reunited, but at times I, I thought to myself, 
Kenapa lah aku tak belajar bahasa Cina dulu? Kenapa lah aku tak belajar bahasa Cina? Things like that, you know. But now, uh, reminiscing the kids, uh, the time as a kid, uh, the um, I I really miss all those moments. And I should have learned a lot from my friends just to reach, to enrich it. To enrich my experiences mm, Itulah benda macam ni So yeah it's, it's it's good to learn About the others uh, Just to share I was actually from convent too uh, Which <laughs> convent is that? Uh, I, I was in convent Ipoh Oh lah uh, uh, <laughs> And actually memang When I was in school uh, I actually got like Lebih terbuka with either like races and um, backgrounds but when I go to matriculation then to UKM to UM my the people around me are mostly Malay yeah. and it and actually it's kind of like um, a shocking a new thing to me like a transition yeah a most lecturers also would agree with me that they have to uh, sort of force the students to be uh, multiracial in the group assignment. If not, they will not mix with each other. Uh, this is uh, this is something that uh, this is where change can happen as well. Tak nak buat macam mana? We have to force for the first stage. <laughs> Hopefully later on they will discover and learn from each other. I learn the values especially. Uh, values of working, styles of working, uh, mindset. You know these things are very expensive, invaluable. We can't, we can't easily see anywhere on. Uh, I mean, everywhere on this earth. We are proud to be Malaysians, to have uh, the race, uh, which is identified also with associated with the religious. Uh, religious affiliations. In other words, uh, certain race belongs to certain certain uh, religion. And in a way, it's it's something uh, uh, something unique as compared to other places in the world. So, itu yang yang interesting lah, interesting. Uh, thank you, uh, Sharif, okay, for the question. Okay, I have another question uh, since okay, we still have time. Um, okay, regarding to uh, this agreement, okay, uh, this agreement, okay, in the in the in the dialogue, okay, okay. So what uh, happens, okay, in um, having a dialogue? Okay, let's say that we are having a dialogue okay, with our colleagues mm -hmm. or we are with our friends. Okay, let's say that. Um, we are not aware or we are not being sensitive okay to their culture or to their mm. uh, background uh, so uh, this causes to uh, this disagreement or conflict okay so how can we solve okay this uh, problem mm. yeah that's a difficult question um if uh, a simple theory is wisdom <laughs> simple theory to be mentioned is wisdom but what is wisdom how to do that okay <laughs> let's share let's ditch, exchange our views what i can uh, what i can um what i can share as a as a theory as well is the things that i uh, i learned recently also through experience um first if the error comes from ourselves learn to say sorry if learn also please try to know ourselves nobody else can know ourselves except of course the almighty allah and our own selves so know ourselves process um can we get along with this personality if we say sorry because it's our own mistake can the other person accept that if that's the case say sorry immediately okay and observe do i say it repeatedly do i apologize repeatedly or should i give time space for her or him to process that apology 
and process the the harm that we have inflicted. Sometimes people take time to cure, to heal. The same to us as well. If the other person did something to us which is really hurtful, uh, how do we go about that? Maybe she or he does not realize that. Maybe we need to take some time to sit back, process, Maybe avoidance is the best way in some cases because the personality simply does not match. <laughs> if that's the case, go with it. No dialogue can happen because we are in a conflict zone. Dialogue only can happen if once we are feeling comfortable with one another. So, yeah, know ourselves in that situation. Apology, how much, if it comes from our part. Give space for her, him to process. And then, are we going to move on with the relationship? Are we Are we okay? Are we okay? Are we friends again? If, if, it's, not the, if it's not the case, maybe avoidance is the best thing to take. Okay, doctor. So it means uh, no more dialogue, huh, doctor? No need to dialogue. Terpaksa. <laughs> this kind of situation. <laughs> Terpaksa, huh? yeah. Terpaksa. <laughs> okay, uh, I heard about uh, avoidance, okay, just now, okay. Uh, so it's actually uh, similar in our OB theory, okay, uh, in, when we are facing a uh, conflict, huh? so in order to resolve uh, that kind of conflict, okay, we can uh, use uh, avoidance uh, strategy or avoidance uh, tactic, huh? So uh, that is um, much more on uh, a behavioral uh, perspective. Uh. So now we are talking about dialogue. Uh, since okay, doctor said that uh, no need to dialogue. Okay, no need to even to debate. Uh. Uh, no need to speak. Uh. No need to speak even, uh, doctor. Yeah, we can listen. Um, yeah, because if if. The, the other person wants to speak, let him speak. So we have to listen. Uh, we, if we want to be selective, not to be hurtful, <laughs> it's up to us. So yeah, that's better to reach uh, peace and harmony. Because sometimes different personalities, we only uh, we are we are we can only be hurtful uh, because uh, in in some cases, uh, it's simply that the other person does not want to listen. So if that's the case, so avoidance is better. <laughs> okay, doctor. Okay, thank you uh, so much. Okay, for the explanation. I think now we are at the end of the session. Uh, since, okay, there are no more questions. Uh, are there any more questions? Okay, no questions. All right, uh, in that case, okay, could you please uh, fill in, okay, the feedback form, okay, for us? All right, uh, Sharifah has already uh, included, okay, the feedback form, okay, in the chat box, okay, could you please fill in the form? And um, uh, I would like to thank, okay, all of you, okay, for participating and joining, okay, this uh, session. And uh, I also would like to thank, okay, Dr. Alwani, okay, for sharing, okay, her thoughts, okay, with us. Uh, now, okay, I think, okay, uh, Sharifa, okay, this is uh, end of session and uh, we're going to have uh, some photo session. Eh? Uh, so, uh, could uh, everybody please, okay, open your camera. Assalamualaikum. Cik Mazlan, tak ada soalan Cik Mazlan. Assalamualaikum Dr. Mazlan. Ingat saya tak? Alah tutup muka lepas tu tanya ingat saya tak. Tak haji. <laughs> Dr. Mazlan mute. Saya dulu sudah Dr. Mazlan. Oh, ayah, ayah, saya tahu. Saya tahu. <laughs> walaupun walaupun apa? Mata je nampak. Masih kenal lagi. Kenal. Uh. Dr. Mazlan ni ajar kat mana? Saya jawab dan pengejap saya tengah tu. Oh, oh okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sains sosial. Uh, sains sosial. Ah, sains sosial. 
Okay, yang lain-lain, uh, do you want to open your camera or not? Okay, we are going to snap some photos here. Tak ada. Tak ada. Hmm. Madam Ainun tak ada sini. Ah, tu lah. Okay, so it's just the four of us. Ya. Yeah. Okay. So, kita empat je lah kot ya. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay, one. Two, three. Um, Doctor Ilhami macam terkat off sikit muka. Oh, kat, uh, uh, jat, jat. Uh, ada Saya macam atas sikit. Kamera saya ni. <laughs> Tinggi. <laughs> hmm. okay, no worries, Khairul. Doctor Khairul, is it? Boleh, uh, boleh Doktor Ilhami macam belakang sikit? <laughs> ah macam tu. Ah, ah, okay. Mas ah okay, okay, gitu. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, done. Uh, okay, uh, one more again. Okay, one okay, more again. I would like to thank okay all of you again okay for joining and participating in okay, this session and also okay thank you so much okay to uh, Alwani uh, for making this session uh, insightful and also uh, meaningful and fruitful. Eh? Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and see you again. Bye. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you. Jumpa lagi dalam campus insyaAllah. Yeah see you next week. <laughs> Starting next week, next week, we are 100% okay, on campus. So, see you. Bye. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.